Let's solve four absolute value inequality word problems. Here's our first one. Suppose that you are allowed to drive within five miles per hour of the speed limit of 30 miles per hour without getting a ticket. We want to write an absolute value inequality that models this situation, and then write an inequality that shows the speeds you are allowed to go without getting a ticket. So our first inequality will include the absolute value, and then we'll try to get rid of the absolute value so we can just really see what speeds are allowed. First, let's let S be our driving speed in miles per hour. It's important that we give a name to the quantity we're trying to talk about. What we know about our speed, our speed which we are calling S, is that it must not be too far away from the speed limit. Its distance from the speed limit can be represented with absolute value. S minus 30 in absolute value bars, that is the distance between our speed and the speed limit. Absolute value bars show up here because we're not concerned with whether our speed is higher than the limit or lower than the limit. We're just concerned with how far away it is. That's why the absolute value bars are important. And from the word problem, we know exactly how far away from the speed limit our speed is allowed to be. And it's five miles per hour. That's the first thing it said. You're allowed to drive with in five miles per hour of the speed limit. So this distance between our speed and 30, the speed limit, must be less than or equal to five. S and 30 have to be within five of each other. That's the first part of the question. That's an absolute value inequality that models the situation. Next, how do we get rid of the absolute value and get S by itself so that we see an inequality describing the speeds we could go? Well, converting an absolute value inequality like this to an inequality without absolute value is really straightforward. All we have to do is get rid of the absolute value bars, so we see that there, it's just s minus 30. Then you're going to want that less than or equal, but then on the left you also need a greater than or equal. And then take that upper bound, which was 5, copy it back here so it still is an upper bound, still has to be less than or equal to 5. But because we've got rid of the absolute value, it also has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. So that's how to get rid of the absolute value. Just get rid of the bars, make sure you have an inequality going both directions, and then repeat that bound but make it negative as well as positive. To finish this up, we're just going to want to add 30 to all sides of this inequality in order to finish getting S by itself. 5 plus 30 is 35, negative 5 plus 30 is 25, and so that is our final answer. 25 is less than or equal to S is less than or equal to 35. This inequality shows the speeds we're allowed to go without getting a ticket. Here is a similar problem. A football used in an NFL game must have an air pressure of 13 PSI, that's pounds per square inch, plus or minus 0.5. We want to write an absolute value inequality that models the range of acceptable air pressures and then solve the inequality for the air pressure, just like we did in the previous example. We'll begin by naming the quantity we're concerned with. We'll let P be the air pressure of an NFL football. The first thing the problem tells us is that the air pressure of the football has to be with in 0.5 of 13. It could be 13 plus or minus 0.5. So it could be 0.5 below, it could be 0.5 above, or anywhere in between. But the way you should read this is with in 0.5 of 13. That's what plus or minus 0.5 means, with in 0.5. And so, just like in the previous example, we write the absolute value of P minus 13. This is the distance between our air pressure and 13. And we know that it has to be within 0.5 of 13. So, this is less than or equal to 0.5. That answers the first part of the problem, and then we can solve for the air pressure P just like we did in the previous example. To get rid of the absolute value bars, we just get rid of them, so P minus 13, and then keep that upper bound, 0.5, but then copy it as a lower bound and as a negative. So P minus 13 is less than or equal to 0.5, but it also has to be greater than or equal to negative 0.5. This is just like that plus or minus you see in the problem plus or minus. Last thing we have to do is add 13 to all sides of this inequality to finish getting P by itself. 
0.5 plus 13 is 13.5, and negative 0.5 plus 13 is 12.5. And so that is the inequality we're looking for, solved for P. This describes the legal air pressures for an NFL football. This next example is a little different. The length of a standard basketball court can vary from 84 feet to 94 feet inclusive. That means these endpoints are allowed. It could be 84 feet, it could be 94 feet, or anywhere in between. We want to write an absolute value inequality that describes the possible lengths of a standard basketball court. What's different about this example is that we're not given a sort of center. In the previous example, we were given our center, so to speak, of 13. And in the first example, we were given our center of 30. In this example, we're not given that center, we're just given the upper and lower bounds of 94 and 84, respectively. In order to write this as an absolute value inequality, it's important we find that center. And to find it, we just need to find the number that's halfway between these endpoints, halfway between 84 and 94. That's pretty easy to do. We just need to see what the distance between these numbers is. The distance between 94 and 84 is 10. And so to find the midpoint, we have to add half of this distance to 84. The distance between the numbers is 10, and half of 10 is 5. So if we add 5 to 84, we'll get that middle center number that we're looking for, which in this case is 89. Notice that 89 is 5 away from 84, and it's 5 away from 94. It is a center. So now we can let L be the length of a standard basketball court and construct our absolute value inequality. The distance between L and the center that we just found of 89 has to be less than or equal to 5. And again, where is 5 coming from? It's half the distance between the endpoints. The distance between 84 and 94 is 10, and half of that is 5. So that's why we have the 5 there. The length of the basketball court could be 5 more than 89, which is 94, or it could be 5 less than 89, which is 84. So that's our absolute value inequality. And notice we have less than or equal here. We are allowing equality because it says inclusive. So we can include those endpoints. All right, last example. Your woodshop instructor requires that you cut several pieces of wood within 3 sixteenths of an inch of his specifications. Let S represent the specification, and let X represent the length of a cut piece of wood. We want to write an absolute value inequality that describes the acceptable values of X, the length of that cut piece of wood, and then one piece of wood is specified to be 9 and 1 8 inches, and we want to describe the acceptable lengths for this piece of wood. In this example, we're not necessarily given a center, but we are given a name for the center, and that's S. That's like our target number. That is the woodshop instructor's specified length. We're allowed to deviate from that length by 3 sixteenths of an inch. So the length of the cut piece of wood x has to be within 3 sixteenths of s. That leads to this absolute value inequality. The distance between the length of our cut piece of wood and the specified length has to be less than or equal to 3 over 16. So that's the absolute value inequality answering the first piece of the question. This absolute value inequality describes the acceptable values of x. It has to be within 3 sixteenths of s. For the second part of the problem, we're given a specific value for s. One piece of wood is specified to be 9 and 1 8 inches. So we're going to replace s with 9 and 1 8 and then we're going to get x by itself to describe the acceptable lengths for this piece of wood. Here are the first few steps of that process. This inequality is just replacing s with the specified length 9 and 1 8. Then we get rid of the absolute value bars by taking x minus 9 and 1 8 and keeping it less than or equal to 3 16 but then also having it greater than or equal to negative 3 16 Remember, that's how you turn an absolute value inequality into one without absolute values. Then, to get x by itself, we add 9 and 1 8 throughout the inequality. In the middle, when we add 9 and 1 8 we're just going to be left with x. On the left side, we have 9 and 1 8 minus 
3 sixteenths, and on the right side we have 3 sixteenths plus 9 and 1 eighth. Now we just have to combine and actually do this addition and subtraction. To do that, we need common denominators. 9 and 1 eighth is the same as 9 and 2 sixteenths. 9 and 1 eighth is the same as 9 and 2 sixteenths. So now we can do this addition and subtraction. 9 and 2 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths is 8 and 15 sixteenths. And 3 sixteenths plus 9 and 2 sixteenths is 9 and 5 sixteenths. And that inequality describes the acceptable lengths for the piece of wood. It can be greater than or equal to 8 and 15 sixteenths and less than or equal to 9 and 5 sixteenths. That's how to solve some basic absolute value inequality word problems. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Algebra 2 course and Algebra 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Audio.